Welcome back. After my recent videos about the HP 35 and TI 30, um, a few people approached me asking for a video on how the early calculators did it. In other words, how they computed transcendental functions so fast with such limited hardware. Um, the algorithms they used uh, go by various names. Some attribute them to Briggs and Napier. In other words, they're very similar to the original algorithms used to compute the first logar uh, logarithm tables. Um, there's a nice, I think it's 1962 paper um, by McGitt, I'm not sure how you say his name, um, and I think it's, I think it's even an earlier paper by Volder uh, describing an algorithm called Cordic. Now depending on what variation of these um, you're using, it's going to have a different name, uh, but they're all kind of based on the same principle. Uh, so I'm going to give you a simplified, I think easy to understand version of the algorithm. So. I'm splitting this into three videos. Uh, the first video will be uh, showing you the math behind the algorithm, uh, plus I want to explain why it's fast. Um, I'll do this through an example. Uh, the second video will be an error analysis of the algorithm. Um, there's no use in having a numerical algorithm without understanding its error. Uh, however, if you're not, if you're a little rusty on your calculus, you might skip video two and go to video three, where I'll do another example in base 10, and I'll show how to compute the inverse function uh, or an exponential. Okay, so that's the plan. Let's get right to it. So the idea is this. I'm going to take a number. Uh, let's do an example where the number is 13.42. And the algorithm is based on rewriting this number in the following way. You're going to rewrite this number as 2 to some power, let's call it a0, times 1.1 to some power, we'll call a1, times 1.01 to a power called a2, 1.001 to the a3, 1.0001 to the a4, uh, and so on. Um, this gives us an infinite product, but of course, we're going to stop that at some point and have a finite product. Then the idea is the logarithm of 13.42, uh, taking the logarithm of this, is simply a0 times, doing the natural log here, natural log 2, uh, plus a1 times natural log 1.1, plus a... 2 natural log 1.01 plus a3 natural log 1.001 um, and so on. Of course, if I cut this off and I have a finite product, then I'll cut this off and have a finite sum. Okay, so let's see how this would work in an example. So let's do 13.42. I guess before I start that, Let's explain why these numbers, the 2, the 1.1, the 1.01, 1.001, etc. Um, well, this is 1 plus 1. This number is 1 plus 0 0.1. This is 1 plus 0 0.01. This number 1 plus 0 0.001. Uh, so I'll, I'll explain later why those numbers are used for speed, but you can see now the pattern used to generate those numbers. So start with 1 plus 1. So this is 10 to the 0 power, 10 to the minus 1, 10 to the minus 2, 10 to the minus 3. Pattern continues like that. Okay, so first let's re rewrite 13.42 um, as this strange product. So to determine what power I should put on 2, um, I'll just use this very non-vintage TI-89 calculator. Uh, let's see. Well, I could start with 2. Then let's see. 2 to the second power, that's 4. 2 to the third power that's 8, 2 to the 4th power, that's 16. That's too big, so it must be 2 to the 3rd power. Okay. Um, now, once I've determined that, I go to the next base, 1.1. Uh, so let's see, 2 to the 3rd times 1.1, that's 8.8. .8. Okay, remember, I'm keeping an eye on the 13.42. Uh, let's see. Not big enough yet. Okay, 1.1 to the 2, 1.1 to the 3, 1.1 to the 4, 
1.1 to the 5. 1.1 to the 6 is now too big, so 1.1 to the 5 is what I'm going to use. So the trick here is, each time I'm multiplying by 1.1, uh, before, each time I was multiplying by 2, to determine the next one, each time I'll multiply by 1.01 until I go over the target number. Okay, so I'm back to the 12.88, and I'm going to multiply by powers of 1.01. Okay, let's do power 2, let's do power 3, let's do power 4. 4 is still good, but I think 5 is going to go over. Yeah, 5 goes over, so it must be power 4 on 1.01. 1 then let's go to 1.001. 1 .001. Now a single 1.001 1 .001 has already taken me over 13.42, so I must want 1.001 .001 to power 0. In other words, just 1 there. Uh, to be under 13.42. Do you see what I did? Okay, um, so there's a zero power there, and let's go to the last one I want to compute, 1.0001. .001. Uh, for 1.0001, you're going to have to go up, um, let's skip a few powers, so let's go up to power 6. That's uh, still under 13.42, so let's go up to 7. Still under 8, still under 9 is still under. Uh, 10 would go over, okay, uh, so I'm going to use 9. Now, after the first one, you can prove that all of these are going to be 9 or below, all of these exponents. The first one could go over, because um, you could start with a very large number, but after that first one, all those exponents will be between 0 and 9. Okay, so I've written, I haven't completed this product, right? Uh, so let's say, since this product's not complete, let's call this an approximation. Okay, um, it's a pretty good approximation, 13.419, okay, um, and so then we'll approximate log, natural log 13.42 by taking the logarithm of this and applying the logarithm rules. It should be 3 times ln 1.1 plus 5 times ln 1, sorry, uh, 3 times, 3 times ln 2. 5 times ln 1.1, 4 times ln 1.01, 0 ln 1.001s, and 9 ln 1.0001s. Okay, when you do this, um, you get, let me just copy the result here, you get 2 Five nine six six nine three. Okay, and if I ask the computer what ln thirteen point four two is, um, it says that, that that's two five nine six seven four six. Okay, and difference is here. Okay, um, not bad. Accurate. First three places are accurate. Fourth one is close. Now uh, what you can prove, and I'll prove this in the second video, is if you go out to the term which is ln 1.0001, then this um, is the bound on the error. So the error here is less than 0 0.0001. We can see that that's true. Okay, it's, uh, it's about 0 0.00005 if you look here. Okay. Um, so if you want a smaller error, you simply compute more terms before you do this. Now, the real secret is, why is this a fast algorithm to, for the cal early calculators to do? So you have to remember um, that they are operating essentially in base 10. So you think of computers as uh, using binary numbers, uh, but early calculators use BCD, where each digit is a base 10 digit, Um, and is encoded in decimal. So you need, I guess, four bits for each digit. Okay, But then the calculator actually operates on each digit 
um, as a decimal digit. So essentially it uses decimal type algorithms even though somehow way down on the hardware it's, it's in binary. Um, so it's called binary coded decimal. Um, each decimal digit is encoded. Okay, so why is this fast? Well, the first thing is that each of these numbers is stored in the memory of the calculator as a constant. Okay. Down to the level that the calculator needs to go for the precision it requires. Uh, this is going to depend on <clears throat> how many digits your calculator wants to display. Uh, maybe it's an 8 digit display, maybe 10. Um, okay, so you have those constants in the calculator's uh, ROM. But the real secret is the choice of these numbers, the 2, the 1.1, the 1.01, and the LN 1. Point, or sorry, and the 1.001. Why those numbers? Well, let's see how you would multiply by 1.01. So you've noticed what I needed to do is keep multiplying by those numbers until I go over, and that helps me to determine this power. So one of the things that you need to do is repeated multiplication by those numbers uh, to determine those exponents. Um, so let's let's see, how would you multiply by 1.01? So let's say I have a number, 3.97, and I want to multiply by 1.01. Well, here's the idea. You need a 3.97 plus 0, right, this is 1 plus 0 0.01, so you need times 3.97. So you need a 3.97 plus a 0 0.01 times 3.97. Now, what is 0 0.01 times 3.97? That's 3.97, those same digits, except shifted like this, right? I need to move the decimal place, 0397. I need to add that. Gary. Okay. So this. Sorry, can't see that. Uh, so the secret is, right, you need the number that you already had, 1 times 3.97, plus a shifted version of 3.97, where the decimal place is shifted. The idea is on those early calculators, shift is a very easy operation to do and add is another operation you can do. So the early calculator hardware does not have uh, what's called a hardware multiplier. In other words, um, it can't multiply or divide kind of inherently. So multiplication and division are done by algorithm. What it can do is it can do shifting of the numbers, shifting them left or right fairly easily. Um, that's just, you know, pushing bits around left and right. The other thing it can do is add Okay, so we'll see if you skip to video three, how basically all we need to do is to shift and add to carry out this algorithm. Um, and the secret is you can multiply by 1.00001, however many zeros you want, simply by shifting and adding instead of actually multiplying. Uh, so that's the secret of the algorithm. Uh, stay tuned for error analysis in video two and another example in video three where I'll kind of show the registers the calculator needs to have and all their states as we go through a computation. Alright, hope you enjoyed this video.